Welcome. Today we're going to be taking apart an HP Pavilion 17. Uh, this is the F215DX. But the HP Pavilion 17 of this generation should be identical or really close. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is flip it over. Make sure your little switch here is in the unlock position. And then we're just going to push that lever over and release the battery. Now I'm going to be using a small Phillips head. This is a 2.5, but you're going to need a little bit smaller one for the two screws underneath the optical drive. So the first thing we'll do is just remove that screw with the little round optical drive symbol right there. And then we can pull that optical drive out. All right, so I'll be using the smaller Phillips, this is like a 1.5, because for some reason they had to use a way smaller Phillips head on these screws. So once you get those two out, then you can switch back to the bigger Phillips. Then we'll uh, finish by removing the rest of the screws here on the bottom cover. Alright, now that we have the majority of the case screws out, we're going to go ahead and remove a few of these covers here because they have, for some reason, just hidden a few of them underneath covers and the rest of these are just kind of sitting bare. It's kind of weird. So there's this small silver cover here and then you're going to need to pry up both of those rear feet. And it doesn't look like it's really easy to get the adhesive with the foot, so just keep that in mind if you want to restick that foot. I'm probably going to need some other kind of adhesive. Alright, so when we pop the uh, little cover off here, just get it kind of in the seam there between the, I guess that's part of the palm rest, and it'll just palm, pop right out. Alright, so it looks like we got a couple more screws to take off, and then we should be able to remove that palm rest. All right, now we can just get a little flat tool in between the palm rest and the bottom case and just kind of start popping it up. Now this bottom case is already cracked, so I'm not too worried about it, but if you want to be careful if yours is good for the kind of the thin spots um, and just try not to put too much pressure on those areas. All right, so now that we can kind of look inside and it looks like there's a few ribbons that need to be 
disconnected before we can lift the palm rest up. And I'm feeling a little bit of resistance here at the back. I don't know if that's just, okay, there we go. So you gotta kinda pull the palm rest toward you to release it from the back part. And every time it slides back, it tries to hook in again. So I have to be careful when we do this. Okay, so with this type of connector, there's a small brown little retainer there. You just flip that up. And then same for the keyboard ribbon. And to see one more further in. And then it's the same type. Just gonna flip that little retainer up with your fingernail. And then we can remove the palm rest. So it looks like on this model the, the keyboard is riveted into the palm rest, so that is not replaceable. And the touchpad, yeah, it looks like it's just a couple screws and it'll kind of swing off. So that is how you remove the palm rest. Now we can see what's left on the inside. All right, so it's kind of wiggly. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the display assembly. That way it'll be easier to work on removing that motherboard. So it looks like the display cable is over here. Same type of connector, we'll flip that up. And then pull that ribbon out. It's got some notches on either side, so you need to lift it up before you pull it out. I'll go ahead and disconnect that Wi-Fi antenna. And make sure that video cable is free. So it looks like we've unhooked the display and now we just have to remove the hinge screws. So I'm gonna leave one screw in either side until the very end, and then I'll remove the last two while I'm supporting the display with my hand. Like we have the screws out now we just need to figure out the best positioning of the hinge to remove it oh, looks like this is one of those really long hinges there's another screw kind of bare where the lock is it's a pretty oddball hinge Okay, so it's, this is really hot. You have to open it up about a little over halfway to position the hinges in the perfect spot to be able to remove that because it's got a clear part of the case and it's got to also have the hinges up far enough not to hit other stuff inside the case. So just a little bit, maybe about halfway. So we'll set the display aside for now. So if you're upgrading your hard drive, it looks like it's just disconnecting one ribbon and this hard drive caddy doesn't have any screws. So of course you'll have to remove the ribbon for the USB port to get that out of the way. And then another flip up type connector and another ribbon that you have to lift up before you can pull out. So we're gonna just need to pry up a little bit on that hard drive. It's just in there by kind of a compression fit. And just pull out the sides of the caddy and pull off the SATA connector. And installation is reverse of oh. 
right, so we can go ahead and just take out this USB audio port board. Just a couple screws, and then looks like we have a battery board that's connected to the motherboard, and the DC jack is connected to the bottom. Um, if you need to replace your DC jack, I would almost say you could get to that without having to remove the motherboard. You could probably just pull that connector out. But we will see in a minute. Again, same type of connector. Just flip up on the retainer and you can pull the ribbon out. So they made it to where the, the Wi-Fi slot is on the bottom, but you can still remove it, same as any other Wi-Fi card. All right, so we'll go ahead and disconnect that speaker. And the optical drive ribbon. So we are almost ready to remove the motherboard. I'm gonna see, I think we can wiggle this jack out without removing that motherboard. It's pretty tough to get in there, but I think it can be done. So some of these DC jack connectors are take a lot of force to actually pull out. Sometimes they can even kind of break the connector. But this one was not bad, so as long as you position it right and you're careful, you should easily be able to replace that without having to take off that motherboard. All right, do one last check. I don't see anything else connected to the motherboard and now we will remove these screws. And with most motherboards, the ports are gonna be sticking through the case. So you always wanna lift from the kind of the middle side of the motherboard, whichever side's not poking through the case. And then as you're lifting up, pull it backwards. All right, so there's the memory and the fan assembly is not an easy RAM upgrade. All right, so the fan, it's just a simple pull out connector and it's best to just kind of wiggle it as you're pulling out. Makes it quite a bit easier. All right, now we can remove those heat sink screws. It does not matter which order when you are removing them, but if you're gonna tighten it back down with new thermal paste, you wanna follow the little number sequence there. It'll help it tighten down evenly. And sometimes the heat sink can be kind of stuck on there pretty well with that thermal paste. Just make double sure we have those loose. Just give it a little 
little bit of a wiggle and and they got a lot of thermal paste. It's pretty stuck on there. All right, so that is it for the motherboard. We have a bare motherboard and we can move on to the display assembly. All right, so for the display assembly, we're going to just need to remove a couple Phillips head screws. And then we can remove the front bezel and see the inside of the display assembly. And as with most laptops, we're going to be separating the front bezel from the back cover. And on the HPs, it's usually pretty easy. You just kind of grab with your fingernails and just start pulling that bezel toward you. And it'll pop up and off. Sometimes it can be a stubborn catch, but as long as you give it some pressure and some wiggling, it really helps to pop it off. All right, so as you can see the inside of the display, it's really simple. We have uh, some hinge screws. Uh, looks like three on each side. And to remove the display, or the actual LCD, you're gonna to need to remove it with the hinges on it because there are two screws going into, I think it's two, maybe three, two. So there's two screws on each side holding the LCD um, in the back cover and then the, um, the hinges, just a few screws on each side for those. The webcam is only held on by some adhesive so if you want to replace that, that webcam, um, all you're going to need to do is just kind of pry up on it from one side. Um, just don't do it from the left or right side. You always want to do it from above or below so you don't bend it. And then the cables just wound through the little channels here on either side. And um, the video cable is just attached to the back of the LCD with some tape. So once you peel that tape back, you'll see the connector and it just pulls out of there. So your Wi-Fi, and this one only has one Wi-Fi antenna. So the Wi-Fi antenna is uh, just held on by tape as well. So basically just a handful of screws and you can take apart the entire display assembly. It's pretty easy. So that is how you disassemble an HP Pavilion 17 series laptop. If this video helped you or you found it informative, please like and subscribe. Thank you.